Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming. Uh, I'll tell you a few words about myself. My name is Ivai Odonchev, and I'm a technical team lead at Hacksoft. You can find me in any of these social channels, and we're going to upload the slides uh, from the talk uh, in LinkedIn after the call. I'm working in a Bulgarian software company for end-to-end uh, -end development, and we are based in Bulgaria. You can see it north from Greece and south from Schengen. Uh, and we kind of have a tradition to go to your Python conferences in the last eight years, excluding the pandemic years. And this is my third time making a uh, talk here. By the way, I have more slides than minutes, so bear with me. Let's see how it goes. First of all, how many of us have experienced and used Django in their daily work? Cool. And how many of us have experienced production outage with their current project? <laughs> this month. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's usually like that, and it's usually in the times when you're, it's not in the working hours. It's either during the night or when you drink beer on the beach, or when you have conference and, uh, <laughs> yeah, to the development team. I love you guys, nothing personal, just a fresh example of uh, how it goes. And well, when this happens, well, usually the priority is obviously to bring production back online. It's not so important why it happened and how it happened. The first priority is to get production back online. And the first step is usually just restart the workers and see how it goes. But then it's Monday and we need to actually figure out what happened and why the production went down. And we have two friends that can help us. And that's the uh, monitoring and the walling, usually. Monitoring to see how the resources are going or, and how the traffic is going and walking for everything else. Okay, last question. How many of us are comfortable when seeing the Django login configuration? This is, by the way, the default Django login configuration. Sounds pretty much complex at first sight. Now, while I was preparing the talk, I saw a talk on Django on US with uh, this meme, and yeah, I had to put it here. So before we start, let's define what exactly is logging. I made a quick experiment and uh, asked ChatGPT what is logging, and it gave me, gave me that complex explanation, which is true, but it's kind of more abstract than <laughs> I'd love to read. And then I saw in the Python documentation, and they say something more clearer and simpler, that the logging is the means of tracking events that happen when some software runs. So it's always about tracking events that matters. And if you start digging in the logging, that is the first example that you see. You have the logging library that comes from the standard Python library. And you have a method like warning and you could pass a string and you see output in your uh, uh, console. And this is a good start, but it's actually a bad example to start with because we'll see why. <laughs> a better example is this. We always use the logging library Python and we need to instantiate a logger class. We'll see what that means later. And then interface with the logger class to implement our logging for the software. So if we see that two lines, first thing we see that the logging.getLogger, the instance that the, the method that returns us the class, has a name. And this is the core principle in the logger that they're named. And this is the equivalent with the logging.warning. The method internally instantiate the root logger, which is the default logger in the, the logging module. The next thing that we can see is that we pass a string, watch out, which can be whatever string we want. And this is actually the event. If the logging is a uh, tool for tracking events, the event is what we pass to this method. And it's usually a string. 
and we see the warning method, which is just an example of what we can, could call, and it's actually a set of uh, levels that an event could have. The level refers to the urgency of the event that we are tracking. And we have five predefined levels that we have from the Python debug, which is used only for diagnostic, and we, I mean, logging by definition is made for bad times. You usually don't want to see the logging when the software runs properly. But debug is something that you should want to see only while developing. Info is a level that refers to confirmation that everything is working okay. A good example in Django is the HTTP request, for example, or the celery task. Warning means well, something bad happened, but it's not urgent. We could delay the fix. Software is running okay. Error means something bad happened and part of the software is not working. For example, your API is broken. Uh, and critical means just everything under fire. And it's interesting that these are predefined levels. They have numeric values and you can actually define your custom level uh, for your uh, logging events. So events or records have levels, but it's uh, also the case that the loggers have levels. And the difference between the events levels and the loggers levels is that the event is the urgency of the message. The level of the logger means basically the urgency of the logger. This logger is supposed to, to output only, for example, urgent messages, errors, and uh, criticals. And then we can see that the records have a destination, which is by default your terminal. And the destination is defined by the so-called handler. Handler is a class that comes from the logging module in Python and is responsible for forwarding the events that you track to the destination that you, you want. Terminal, file, or some web cloud, like the socket handler is just forwarding to the web your events. And a good example for this is Sentry, for example. You normally in production would want to use something like socket handler. And we have a third place that have defined own level, the handler. So you could have event level, you can have a logger level, which is a future logger with uh, level warning, we output only warning, error, and critical. But the handler defined in itself what kind of levels it's supposed to handle and forward. So we have three components. Logger is the universal class that is an interface that the code uses. Log record, that is the event. And the handler that sends the walk records to the appropriate destination. And if we see that visually, an example, if we have the logger with uh, level warning, handler with uh, level error, that would mean the logger is supposed to output only error, uh, warning error and critical messages, but the handler will only forward the error and the critical messages. And this is, this is actually a good example of how, how you could manually configure the logging, but that is not the recommended way that Python says. Because imagine every time you, you are making a Django app, you have to define step-by-step, -step, adding handlers, setting levels, and everything. It's too bit nightmare. The preferred way is what they call a dict config. Dict config is the out-of-the-box way that Python provides for configuring your logging. And it sounds really similar to what we have in Django. We have the logger's key, the handler's key, and it's basically a dictionary with links between the keys. You have the my logger, named logger, on level warning, and it has console, which is defined in the handlers console. Just the linking between the keys in the dictionary. 
Uh, by the way, we are going to use this uh, dict configuration for the rest of the talk. So, a quick recap. Loggers are named. Name is always unique. If you get a logger twice by the same name, it is the same logger. Loggers work with records or events. Handlers is what defines the destination for the events. And all of the loggers, records, and handlers have their own levels. And dictionary configuration is the preferred way for to define a logging for your app. So, two more things. Uh, handlers can define their all formatters. Formatter is a class that comes out of the box from the logging and is supposed to get the record formatted in a way, literally format the string that goes to the handler and then forward to the destination. You could use the, the Python class or you could use the direct interface with this S string like format. And the next thing we have is filters. Filters are something that you could bind to either the logger or the handler, and you could execute an explicit Python logic when the event is forwarded, either forwarded from the logger or arriving in the handler. And uh, the way that Django uses it is by so-called debug true or debug false filters. For example, you would want to lock SQL queries if you are in development mode and you, you're, you set debug true, but on production, you wouldn't want it. And the filter looks like that. It's just a Python class that uh, uh, inherits the, the logging filter and then make the explicit check. And maybe the most important thing about the loggers are that they actually have a hierarchy. When you have a logging configuration, it's always a mathematical tree of loggers that you have. And the hierarchy defined by the names with a separation of a point. For example, if you have the logger's parent, parent.child, parent.child is always a child logger to parent. And if we have these three logger's defined here, parent.child, parent.child, dot grandchild, parent, and we output a message from all of them, what would happen is that the parent logger we output this message once because of its handler, the console handler. The parent or child logger will output his message once for its own console handler and once for the parent handler because it will handle the child messages. We have two messages and the grandchild logger will output his message three times. And that's something that we usually don't want. Sometimes we want, but usually don't. And we can manually configure that by setting the propagate boolean by true or false, it's part of the configuration, where you can set for a certain logger, for example, grandchild, I would want to propagate the grandchild events to the child events, but I don't want to propagate the child events to the parent events. This is a kind of fine tuning to the configuration. So if we have a logger that has its own handler and uh, has a parent logger which has a parent handler and the propagate is true, the message will be forwarded to where the propagate is set to true. This is the example from the logging configuration that we, we saw. So, more of the story, the hierarchy is really important and ideally the hierarchy should match your application's module structure. Most of the time that is a rule of thumb. We'll see an exception uh, for a few slides. So, what about Django? We saw how the logging in Python works, but uh, how does Django use it? Well, even if you open the documentation, you, you see a sentence that says that Django actually use 
the Python configuration out of the box. He doesn't upgrade something. He doesn't provide a new interface for it. Just use the Python configuration. And what is really good is that Django provides the entire hierarchy of loggers comes out of the box and it's a hierarchy of uh, meanings, basically. It's uh, each logger is, for example, Django server is supposed to work only HTTP requests. Django DB is a parent logger for SQL queries, transactions and schema and everything, which is really powerful. So get back to the logging configuration of Django. What it means, we have the loggers key with, hope you can see it. Uh, we have the loggers key and uh, each of the lower have defined their own handlers. So we have a direct linking between the, the keys. And then we have defined a uh, formatter for Django server. And that's how a sample formatter is. That's the source code of Django literally checks the status code of the request and formats making the 500 red and uh, 200 white, for example. And then we have explicit filters for the terminal output and the mail admin's output. And the reason is you wouldn't want to send emails locally and you wouldn't uh, want to log over both output in production, probably. So this is how it looks like. This is the default logging configuration in Python. We have the Django logger and the Django server logger. And there's an explicit propagate false setting that says, okay, I want to configure my Django server logger, but I don't want to get from the handlers of a Django logger. Explicit check. And we have the formatter attached to our Django server, for formatter, uh, Django server handler and the two filters attached to the Django uh, handlers. So what if we want to use the lock all of our SQL queries? Well, what we do is define uh, Django DB backends uh, logger in our loggers key. And this is a logger that comes out of the box from Django. It's a document in the Django documentation. We define our handler, which is forwarding to the stream handler, which is supposed to output in the terminal. And we have the our own formatter, SQL formatter, which only outputs the SQL query string without the time of execution and all the other things in the record. Custom lowers. So in our app, we would want to place logs for debugging if something happens and we can configure them by explicitly saying the name of the logger and again the same pattern handlers and everything and you could see that these two keys in the top version and disable existing loggers so version is something that's provided from the python logging module but it's not used yet it's kind of made with the idea that some, if someday Python decides to change the format of the logging configuration entirely, uh, it should be backward compatible to the old software. Disable existing loggers is saying, okay, I want to define my logging configuration as a dictionary and overwrite everything that I had, disable everything that I've had before. And so the next question is where to store the logs? When, when we are developing, it's easy, terminal. Well, for urgent logs, Sentry does a great job for storing this. It's uh, in the example that we saw, it would be a handler that only captures uh, warning error and critical messages and forward it to the WebSocket handler to, to Sentry. And this is, this is really good to have this split by urgency because when you open Sentry, you remove all the spam from the confirmation that things are working okay and you see only the, the things that are bad. 
For non-urgent work, there are plenty of services uh, outside. And you, if you use some cloud-based deployment like uh, Heroku or AWS, it's usually a bad idea to store files on the operating system where you put the logs. It's usually a good, better idea to use some cloud service like Datadog to have a good interface for querying because that, that's what's important when you have uh, your logging. And a few tips. So the logs are made for bad times. This is uh, something that you realized with the first production outage. And it's a good idea to put as much context as you can in your error handling and logging. Because when production is down, you might not be the one who write the code and remember what happened. It might be other person. Uh, so yeah, have that in mind. The next thing is use some visualization tool. I found a cool package logging tree, which you can call a method to and see a tree representation of your all of your loggers in your app for a certain moment. And then, as I said, ideally the hierarchy should match the module structure, but that's no, not always a good idea. And uh, channels is a good example of that. In an older version of channels, uh, they have used the underscore dundernet method uh, name of the module, and it turned out to be a bad idea once they refactor their code. You're naming a file, and suddenly your login configuration breaks. And not only your login configuration, but anyone that uses channels. So if you, you're making a library that is supposed to be reused to other softwares, it's usually a good idea to be a constant. Exception handling. These are three equivalent methods for exception handling. And the first of them is kind of bad because you uh, explicitly assign the exception to a variable and then put it as an F string to your lower.error method. A better way would be calling explicitly the error method and uh, pass x info equal to true which will automatically capture the context from the accept. And of course, the logic module provides a shortcut for that, lower.exception, which does exactly the same thing. So I hope you're more comfortable now with the logic configuration of Python, and I would be really happy if you ask some questions. Uh, and also our CEO, Hacksoft CEO, will be having the lecture on Friday and it will be a really interesting one, so make sure you don't miss it. Oh, well, a very interesting presentation. Let's give him a, a second round of applause. Um, we now open the floor for questions. Uh, we have five minutes, so keep your question brief and to the point. And there are two microphones, one standing. If it sits closer to the standing microphone, just go to the microphone. Otherwise, I'll hand you the microphone myself. Hello, thank you for the talk. Uh, just a quick question. Um, some of our work, uh, I deal with legacy code, let's say, generally, huh. where the logging had no configuration, huh. uh, just used the default in Django. Huh. Um, and I need to change that. Throughout the code, there's logger.info, logger.debug, fairly random. Right. Um, any advice on how to treat that kind of section of code? So it's an older version of uh, Python, an older version of Django? or uh, It's Django 3.2, okay. Python 3.7 at the moment. Mm -hmm. Well, what I would do is, uh, first of all, visualize the current configuration. If I don't have an idea what's currently uh, configured in the end, I would use uh, something like that to visualize it and then define it explicitly in one place uh, in the setting and start modifying one by one. So I need to create a config. Yeah, this legacy yeah. code doesn't even have one. So, Or you could define a new configuration and uh, pass the disable existing words to false, but uh, then you have the case of uh, mutating the current login configuration. And it's kind of implicit what uh, if that's not going to break something. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions? Let me check whether there are any remote questions. No? Well, this pretty much concludes our talk. But we can continue our conversation uh, in the hallway of a coffee and in the beer garden. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.